On this quick video, we'll talk a little bit about Shipa's integration into Atlassian's development tools to help support your development and DevOps workflow. So let's have a look at a scenario. Let's say we have today Bitbucket, we have Op Ops Genie, and we have other Atlassian tools in place. And when we try and implement now microservices, Kubernetes into our reality and connect it to our Atlassian tools, such as again, Bitbucket that we're gonna be using during this example, one of the things that is obvious across many organizations is that many of the developers, they, they don't wanna spend time delivering and creating YAML objects, Kubernetes objects. They wanna rather focus on delivering code. At the same time, the DevOps, they wanna enable developer productivity and experience while having a control and dynamic environment. So you already have your Bitbucket in place, you already have your CI pipelines taking care inside Bitbucket. You have Ops Genie, for example, for your incident and alerts. So how do you bring now your Kubernetes into that reality but at the same time as a DevOps without hurting the developer experience, without pushing them to learn those objects, those YAMLs, and at the same time without having you to support on creating those and creating more effort, while you could rather be focused on governance actually. And the last part is I want to tie, as mentioned, my existing and new Kubernetes clusters easily into my Atlassian infrastructure. For this example, we're going to be using Bitbucket for hosting our code as well as the CI pipelines from Bitbucket, but Shipa extends the integration into Ops, Genie, and so on for your incident and alerts for applications deployed uh, using Shipa as well. So as we're gonna move into the demo in a few seconds, but as, as an application developer, I'm gonna create a repository into Bitbucket. I'm gonna push my code there and you're gonna see that I'm gonna be placing application dependencies, for example, inside a requirements text file. Inside my Bitbucket uh, repo, I'll, I'm gonna be using git commands. And you're gonna see that within my files, I'm not gonna be creating any Kubernetes related objects. Um, and still, I'm gonna just gonna be focusing on my code and pushing that. If there are any health checks or anything, we're gonna cover a little bit about the Shipa YAML file, uh, the options that you can put in there, um, such as health checks, environment variables, hooks that can be executed when your application is building or after your application is up and running. And what we're gonna have is, we're gonna have Bitbucket actually, instead of trying to deliver directly to my clusters and changing the state of my clusters in case there is a misconfiguration or a wrong object created, or uh, just in case of security, Bitbucket will actually deliver to Shipa pools, which you can learn more about Shipa pools on different videos. And the Shipa pool or the landing pad will then be responsible for receiving that application from Bitbucket, validating all the permissions, running security checks, attaching resource plans. So it's gonna limit how much memory, CPU, and swap your applications can consume. That's based on what the DevOps or platform engineering team created. And based on the cluster that is tied to that pool, uh, doesn't really matter if it's GKE, AKS, EKS, on-premises Kubernetes, Oracle Kubernetes, and so on, that Shipa pool or the landing pad will automatically create the objects based on that cluster. So you as a developer, you don't have to worry about learning that. And you as a DevOps, you don't have to be configuring that, automating that process and adding more to your DevOps workflow since it doesn't add value and allowing you to focus on the governance and delivery of a better environment for a development team. That basically makes the cluster agnostic for your developers and for you as, DevOps, as, as a DevOps as well. And it gives you a controlled change of state. So if there is any error when deploying directly to Kubernetes, if there is any of the objects that is created that is not right, Chipa rolls back everything and gives you your cluster, get to your cluster in the same state that it was before. So it doesn't impact your production environment. So the goal with that is I'm going to show how developer productivity can be hugely increased between the integration between Shipa and Atlassian tools and how you can deliver directly to your multiple clusters across multiple providers using Atlassian tools, Shipa, and Kubernetes. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so look at the environment we have here. Um, in front of us, we have our Shipa instance with information about the pools we have, applications, the, the distribution of my, my pools and clusters my deployment info, um, security scans, and so on. 
When we come to clusters, we can see we already have clusters connected to Shiba. Clusters coming from Oracle Kubernetes, Azure Kubernetes, uh, GK, multiple GKE clusters. And we also have our pools that are pointing to the clusters across the different clouds. Um, if we look into one of them, we can see all the information about the nodes. We can see the applications that are deployed across those nodes, as well as uh, monitoring information across CPU, memory, disk. We can see our applications that are running. For the sake of simplicity in this demo, we're gonna be creating and deploying an application called Bitbucket. Um, if we look for it, there is nothing right now. There's no such application. When we move to Bitbucket, we have now one repository that it's called Shipa. It's um, it's an empty repository right now. There is nothing. So let's populate it with a simple Python application. Okay, so great. We can see here, we can clone. Let's go into that. Right. I'm going to copy an existing Python, a Django Python app that I have here. Great. So we can get add. Great. So now our code should show up on Bitbucket. I'm doing this uh, with a new um, repository uh, or an empty repository, but um, you can do the same, exactly the same with your existing application, so nothing needs to change. So let's have a look at what we have here. Um, we have my Python application, so manage my Python. It, it is a Django app, so there is nothing really exceptional or different here basically my folder structure. But one thing you have to notice is that there's no Kubernetes related objects, right? So again, the goal is to enable developer productivity from Bitbucket or Atlassian tools and allow them to deploy on Kubernetes without having to write a single Kubernetes file. And inside requirements.txt file, I, I have components of my application if I need to. My shipa.yaml file, more information about shipa.yaml file, you can actually include deployment hooks. So if you want code to be executed when your application is building or after when your application is started or every time it's restarted, you can add things such as health checks as well for your application and so on and so forth. Um, so you can leverage those directly from shipa.yaml file. What we're gonna be doing is let's go to pipelines. I'm going to start using pipelines, which by the way, are very, it's nicely done from, from Bitbucket. It's very simple to set up and get up and running quickly with a simple example. We have here the Python because my code is a Python. We're going to be using that. Um, pip install requirements. That's the only thing we have right now. Now the things that we're going to be adding are related to the Shipa integration. So the first thing we want to do there is install Shipa CI. Let me get that. Shipa CI will be responsible for making the integration between Bitbucket and Shipa and allow Bitbucket to deploy on Shipa and hence Shipa deploy across your Kubernetes clusters. Um, the next line, we're going to allow Bitbucket to create the app directly on Shipa. Um, we can call this app bit bucket, like we mentioned before. We can use the pool GKE. Um, we could actually use any of the pools that are here that are pointing to the different clusters for bit bucket and for the developers and even for the DevOps team. It's it's actually doesn't make a difference. It's seamless. Shipa will take care of the deployment on the respective Kubernetes cluster that that pool is pointing to. And last but not least, we want Bitbucket to deploy our app as well. So I'm not only create the app, but deploy the app, Bitbucket. Great. 
you can see that I'm creating a few variables in here. Shipa, such as Shipa server, Shipa email, and Shipa password. Those are required for Bitbucket to be able to connect to Shipa. Another option, instead of using email and password, you can also use user tokens that you can create directly in your Shipa. But for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna be using this. Wait, we're gonna commit. Well, the pipeline is gonna execute, but it's gonna fail because there's no, we, we don't have the variables in there. So let's, let's do a quick setup. We come to repository variables. So I'm coming to repository settings and then repository variables. I'm gonna create the three variables that I need. Let me just get them here. The first one is Shipa email, which I'm gonna use my own email. Great, Bitbucket is letting me know that it failed on the first one, that's fine. The second variable I'm gonna create is Shipa password. Shipa 2020, in this case, we can secure the variable. And Shipa server, which address is this one. We can secure as well, great. So when we go back to our pipelines, you can see it failed. But now we can run our pipeline. As mentioned, when we go to applications, there's no Bitbucket application. And we're gonna be deploying on a GKE cluster, GKE1. If we go to our GKE platform, we can see our GKE1 cluster here. Great, so let's run our pipeline again. Master branch, default. Great. Okay, Bitbucket started the build setup. It's installing the requirements text file. So it's installing basically Django, Ganicorn, and anything else that you added there. It's now installing Shipa CI. It created the application, as you can see here. And we'll now start deploying the app. So if we go back to our Shipa instance now, let's refresh here and we search for Bitbucket. Great, we can already see our application in here. And you can see that Bitbucket and Chipa already created your application endpoints or a C name for your application. You can see it's already running one unit, so it already created the unit, it gives you more information about the plan and how, many, how much resources your applications can consume, environment variables, and so on. Later, after the application is deployed, it will start generating transactions such as latency information, monitoring information, and so on for your app, as you can already start seeing some of them come here. Life cycle of your application, when it was created, when it was deployed, security scans, it didn't find any vulnerabilities. And when we go to Bitbucket, we see that it's already deploying the app and we can use Shipa app log command to see that to see what's going on. Great, we can see that Shipa's pool or land, Shipa's landing pad, it's already deploying the app uh, on the GKE1 cluster. And it's good to remember that me as a DevOps, I didn't need to help create any type of objects for Kubernetes. Um, and me as a develop, developer, I also didn't have to learn about any of the objects, deployment, services, and anything. I'm basically focusing on submitting the code and between Shipa and Bitbucket, we, um, all your applications are deployed into Kubernetes without any type of effort in there. After our application is running, it's also important to mention that you can set up alerts directly from Shipa and integrate with Ops Genie. So if there are failures when deploying your apps, updating applications and so on and so forth, Shipa will send an, or we will create an alert directly on Ops Genie. So your full circle is integrated into application tools. The deployment is almost at the end. Great. And it started, it finished. 
and we can see the build ran successfully okay. And if we go even to our GKE cluster now, we filter our workloads. My cluster GKE one. We can see my Bitbucket application already created there. So this saves developers a ton of effort on when deploying application. It speeds up the delivery of applications. And at the same time, it frees up the DevOps teams to focus on, on the governance and the guardrails around the application deployments across multiple clusters, security, and so on. So hopefully this was helpful to understand how Shipa and Appalachian tools can help you uh, help developers and DevOps with a better delivery and experience when delivering across multiple clusters and Kubernetes. Thank you.